Hello and welcome back. In this video we will continue the FizzBust application using recursion. In the previous video you saw that a simple for loop and a conditional statement will do the trick and you will pass the job interview with flying colors. However, if you want to impress your boss and your colleagues, how about trying to solve the problem using recursion? Well, in this video we'll discuss how to do that. Now recursion just like the loop, has uh, basically going to iterate through the numbers that we are going to display on our screen. So just like loop, we need a condition that will stop the recursion. If you look at the loop from our last video, you see that we started counting from 100 and the condition is that we will stop looping when the i equals 1. And until that condition uh, happens, we will keep looping and decrease i by 1 within each iteration. So we're going to basically simulate that using recursion. Now in recursion I need a function that I can call and that I can call from within the function itself. So I'm going to create such function and I'll just call it a recursive solution. Now this function we'll need to accept an argument of integer, just like we have it in our loop, we have i, so in this case I'll just call it n, so I'll accept an integer n. So this function can be called from our main method, I'm just going to leave the loop as is, and after the loop I'm going to just call the recursive function. So first I will output a blank line, just so there's a little space between the for loop solution and the recursive solution, and just a little header that now we are outputting recursive solution. And the recursive solution in this case does not return anything, everything will be processed within the function, so I can simply call it directly. And I'm going to pass an integer. So in our loop we started to count from 100 all the way down to 1, so I'm going to simulate the same solution and then after that I will show you also how to do it from 1 to 100. So to start from 100 down to 1, all I have to pass is the ending number, which would be the 100. So 100 becomes our n that is being passed into our recursive function. So the first thing I need to do is to create a condition that will stop the recursion. Otherwise, just like loop can be infinite, the recursion can repeat itself infinitely as well if there is no proper way to stop it. So I'm going to create a variable, just like we did before, I'll call it text, and that basically will be the text that we will be outputting on the screen, either fizz or buzz or the number itself. And now I can create the solution, and the first thing, like I said, will be the condition that stops the recursion. And the recursion stops when we hit the number 1. Again, we're calculating or displaying the numbers from 100 down to 1, so the last number to display is number 1. So if our n is less than 1, then we'll stop the recursion and we'll simply return nothing. And the condition that is going to be used to display the fizz bus, fizz or bus, or the uh, number itself, is exactly the same. So I'm going to take the if statement and I'm just going to paste it right into my function. However, my variable is called n in this case, so I'll just change i to n. So once again, if the mod 15 equals 0, we'll display fizzbuzz. If it's 3, uh, then uh, fizz. If it's 5, then buzz. Otherwise, we'll display the number n. So since we are calculating from 100 to 1, I can call now the recursive solution from within itself. But before I do that, I want to actually output the number on the screen. Before each call, I want the output on the screen. And I'll put the text, just like we did in the loop. And after that, I'll call the function again. So I'll do one call at a time, displaying one number at a time. And the way I'm going to call the recursive solution, since we are counting from 100 to 1, I'm going to do n minus 1, just like we did in the loop. Remember, in our condition within the loop, we did 
i minus minus, and this is the same thing. With each iteration or each call, I will decrease n by one. So that way, I'll start from 100, come to one, and at that point, recursive solution ends. And the focus is the return back to each of the calls that was made to this function. So first I call the function from our main method. It comes here and is 100, so it's not less than one, so it continues here and uh, then outputs either fizz or buzz. In case of 100, it obviously is divisible by five, so it displays buzz. And then, instead of returning back to our main, we call the function again, but this time with 99. So it calls the function, 99 is not less than one. So it comes here, 99 is divisible by three, so it outputs fizz, and then calls the recursive solution again, this time with 98, and so forth until it reaches one. And uh, once it reaches one, it outputs the last iteration, and then goes, and one minus one is zero, which is less than one, and it ends the recursive solution and it returns back to our main. By then, all the numbers will be already output on our screen. All right, so uh, let's test it. All right, so the first is our for loop solution. We already checked that. So let's scroll down and here's my recursive solution starting from 100, which is bus, 99 is fizz and so forth. 90 is fizz bus because again, it's divisible by 15 then uh, so it's 75 and if i scroll down you can see that i have four then fifth as number three then two and one so this solution works the same way the loop does now to do it in reverse meaning counting from one to 100 all we have to do is instead of passing 100 as the end of our uh, recursive solution we will pass one, we will pass the beginning value from which we want to count. So now all we have to do is change the condition. Instead of if n is less than one, since we are counting from one to 100, we'll simply do if the n is greater than 100, then we will stop. Now one more thing we need to change in our call to recursive solution, we are calling from n minus one. So in this case, we would basically go straight to zero because we pass one, one minus one is zero. Instead, we want to keep increasing n by one. So we start with one, then we'll start with two, then three, then four, all the way to 100. And then when it reaches 101, the end of recursive solution calls is uh, reached and we return back to our main. So let's see if this works. And you can see in my recursive solution starts with one, two, then fizz, four, bus, fizz, and so forth. 30 is fizz bus, that's correct. And all the way up to 97, 98, then 99 is fizz, and 100 is bus. So you can see that's working correctly as well. All right, so as you can see, recursive solution kind of mimics the logic of the loop, especially when it comes to the condition that starts the recursive solution and how to end it and how to iterate through it. So if it's still a little unclear, well, I have a good news. In the next video, we'll continue our exploration of loops and uh, recursion and we'll do Fibonacci numbers. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video.